Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley Jenkins, and welcome back from the weekends. Hot on the heels of the news that the Nintendo Switch is the second best launch console of all time in the US. It moved 906,000 units in its first month alone here in the States. We've got some more numbers about its worldwide numbers. Numbers. In case you were wondering, we have numbers. According to research from Superdata's estimates, the Switch actually did 2.4 million in sales around the globe in its first month. That's better than Nintendo's own predictions for the Switch. They wanted to move around 2 million, and at the time, everyone thought that was kind of ambitious. Superdata says that thanks to these solid numbers, they're upgrading their projections from 5 million units to 7.2 million units sold for the console's first year on the shelves. Now, we'll know for sure if those estimates actually hold up. Nintendo said they'll be giving a full sales rundown at their next investor briefing, which is going to be later this month, so we can get a little bit of checking on that. But still, solid launch. Digital Foundry continues to pump out more information about Xbox Scorpio since the system's reveal earlier this month. Man, they sure are getting a lot out of it, huh? And we're there for every, every little bit. In addition to getting a deep dive of Scorpio specs, Digital Foundry also says they got to see a Scorpio built right in front of them during their time with Microsoft. And curiously, the box itself is apparently going to surprise people. Oh, you teases. Digital Foundry's Richard Ledbetter writes, and with that, an almost complete Project Scorpio unit sits in front of me, lacking only what Microsoft calls the ID, the final exterior plastics. All I'll say here is that when Microsoft reveals the Xbox at E3, you should go in expecting surprises, pleasant ones. Hmm. Who knows what that means, but Ledbetter also indicated that the look of it will match previous Xboxes. But maybe, possibly, hopefully won't be as big as the original Xbox One, although we'd get a lot more mileage out of our jokes if it was. Square Enix held a special live stream today to celebrate Nier Automata's milestone of 1 million units, and with it came some announcements for ongoing content updates. And one of those is a little bit... Interesting. According to the live stream, the game's DLC will feature a coliseum where you'll face new threats like CEO of Square Enix Yosuke Matsuda and Platinum Games President Kenichi Sato. Naturally, they blast you with projectiles of their own faces. Your reward for defeating these CEOs in battle? Well, costumes for 2B, 9S, and A2 that basically add even more ass than ever before. So, if you've been wanting to throw down with the head of a AAA publisher and some more gratuitous Android ass, then this is the content for you. The CEO DLC titled 3C3C1D1194409279, yes, that is actually the name, will be out on May 2nd in Japan. If you don't want to pay an arm and a leg, for the discontinued, now, sadly, NES Classic, you'd better do your best to grab one during these last April shipments. In the wake of Nintendo canceling the popular novelty console, prices for the NES Classic have skyrocketed on reseller sites like eBay, where it's going for around 300 bucks. Kotaku reached out to a group called Price Charting, who noted that the average price for an NES Classic is averaging around $350 across the web, which is a little bit heftier than the actual $60 price tag. Also, who would spend that instead of getting a Switch? It's gonna get virtual console and can probably get all those things for less than $350, bucks. but what do I know? Now, we don't know when the last shipment is expected, so that's one thing I don't know, but Nintendo said the final run of systems will be happening this month. So, if you want one and you don't want to pay hundreds of dollars, you better go ahead and try and get one while you can. Keep an eye on your local retailers or online retailers for their restocking. It's been a few weeks since the release of Mass Effect Andromeda and things seem to have quieted down a bit now that Bioware started rolling out some face fixing patches among a couple of bug fixes. Now one of the game's lead designers is responding to all the game's criticism. Speaking with IB Times, Andromeda lead designer Ian Fraser said, I won't lie, it's hard. It's hard to see the criticisms. Some of the challenges that are out there, don't get me wrong, I don't enjoy the occasional gut punch, but on the balance, I think it's really valuable that things have gone this way. Our ability to get feedback from fans on such a broad spectrum is great. Elsewhere in the interview, Fraser says that despite all the negativity, things are basically on track with their post-launch plans, it's just that some of their priorities have changed. It'll be interesting to see how the game changes over time, if they can reverse some of that negativity and, and really get that back. Uh, honestly, they did a pretty decent job. They couldn't overcome uh, with Mass Effect 3 all of the backlash against the ending, but then they put the Citadel DLC out and that's what a lot of hardcore fans now remember about Mass Effect 3. So. 
it's possible to change that, at least with the really hardcore fans, so we'll see. Looks like there won't be any General Leia in Star Wars Episode Nine. sadly. Previously, Carrie Fisher's brother said that the late actress would be in the movie courtesy of existing footage, but Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy said recently that no, Fisher will not appear in Episode Nine. The Verge reported that in an interview on Good Morning America, Kennedy said that Fisher's brother, Todd, maybe mixed up the films when he made his comments. She added, We finished everything in The Last Jedi, and Carrie is absolutely phenomenal in the movie. As for Episode 8, director Ryan Johnson said The Last Jedi will address the subject of Rey's parentage, which has been a hot topic among fans. Is she Skywalker? Is she maybe Rey Kenobi? Johnson said on Good Morning America, It's something that is absolutely going to be addressed. He was about to reveal more details, saying, It depends on. But then he stopped. It's so close, you tease. More Star Wars news, always. Uh, there are new Star Wars Land theme parks that are being planned at both Disneyland and Disney World, surprising absolutely nobody, and they sound awesome. Apparently, they're going to be much more interactive than regular theme parks. For instance, Mashable reported you'll be able to go on a ride where you pilot the Millennium Falcon, but if you do a bad job, Chewbacca might growl at you later on in the cantina. You'll also have the opportunity to work for the Resistance or the First Order. There will also be droids, adats, and lightsabers that look much more realistic than the crappy plastic ones. The theme parks are set to debut at both Disneyland and Disney World in 2019, which feels far away now. No, it feels pretty far away. I can't, I can't make that one sound any closer. Wait, okay, one more piece of Star Wars news. Move over, Force Awakens. We've got a new global box office champion, and it's not Star Wars. It's dudes who drive fast cars. Yes, The Fate of the Furious made a whopping $532.5 million in its opening weekend, surpassing The Force Awakens $529 million in 2015. Interestingly, the movie didn't do as well domestically as Furious 7. It made $100.2 million versus Furious 7's $147 million for the US, so pretty big step down. But Fate of the Furious cleaned up internationally. It made $525 million overall, set a record in China with $190 million. So be prepared for a lot more fast car movies. Hey, maybe the next one will be called The Gash in the Furious. Or not or not. But hey, look, they do a lot of weird things with those franchise names, so it's a possibility. Apparently, some companies don't really like being called patent trolls. And that's just too bad, according to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Ars Technica reports that the nonprofit Digital Rights Group was sued last year by an Australian company that it called a classic patent troll in a 2016 blog post. An Australian court sided with Global Equity Management SA and ordered the EFF to remove the post. Then in January, an attorney representing the company again demanded that the blog post be removed and that the EFF pay $750 thousand dollars. The EFF didn't comply with either. What'd they do? They sued back, arguing in US federal court recently that the Australian ruling should be declared unenforceable because it violated the EFF's free speech rights, which probably is another way of saying, hey dudes, there's already a patent for free speech and it's called the Constitution. USA, USA. And then they waved flags and rode off on an eagle. Video game industry veteran Peter Moore said goodbye to video games recently as he's quitting his job at EA to become CEO of Liverpool Soccer Club in the UK. Moore had previously been an executive at Sega where he helped launch the Dreamcast and at Microsoft during the launch of the Xbox and Xbox 360. More recently, he was chief competition officer of EA's esports division. Moore posted a video on YouTube that ran through his highlights in the industry Hopefully they include him getting tattoos on there. NeoGAF also found a post of his on Twitter which said, I am leaving behind thousands of great memories that comprise the career journey of a lifetime. From the advent of online gaming, to the console wars, and now to games as 365 days a year live experiences. I've been fortunate to have borne witness to the amazing growth of this, our wonderful gaming industry. Well, have fun playing soccer, Peter. We'll miss ya. Going outside like a jerk. All right, that's all the news we have for you guys today. What do you think of all the stories? Let us know in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every day. Make sure you like this video, and if you're new here, subscribe to The Know. We do this a lot.
a lot of things that I didn't know for a long period of time, like the actual lyrics to that song. I didn't know it said smack my bitch up. I oh. thought it I thought it said take my picture. <laughs> and so I was like, I was like, I was like, well, this is a really weird chorus. I mean, it doesn't make it, it the the lyrics don't make it any better, but I just thought in the middle of the song, they'd be like, take my picture.